Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Want your life to be a 10? Dr. Stuart Lickman says he can make it happen. Stu, thanks for being with us today. Hi, Bill. <laughs> it's great uh, being here. Now, you've written a book called Make Your Life a 10, correct? That's correct. Obviously, that's a goal that we would all love to have. Uh, if we're a 10, we're um, reaching the goals we want in life, obviously. And uh, we're kind of the ultimate. And if, if I'm correct in what I read in this book, you've actually studied unconscious decision-making and, in effect, how to make our life as a 10 as part of your Ph.D. studies. Is that correct? That's correct, indeed. You did this at MIT, so you didn't take the easy way out, did you? MIT is like trying to get a drink from an open fire hydrant. <laughs> but you're talking about one of the finest schools in the country. You're, you're making, a little, uh, making us laugh a little bit about it. But uh, this, this is not uh, an easy school to get through or to get into. That's true. I did it unconsciously. Now, what percent of our decisions, and let's say an average day, just any of us going through, are what you would call unconscious decisions? Close to 100%. Really? We, yeah, basically, decisions are proposed by the unconscious. And consciously, we can say basically yes or no. But that's about all the conscious mind can do. So, I mean, I would think that uh, obviously some things, if I'm not thinking I would grab a pair of socks and put them on, I'll make my coffee the same way and I go to work the same way. But I, I would think that when you say almost all of them, I would think some of them that I'm thinking about that if someone calls me up and says, hey, uh, do you want to meet for lunch today at 12 o'clock at so-and-so restaurant? What are you going to have? Uh, aren't those more conscious decisions or are they still coming from the unconscious? The unconscious translates the sound waves coming in through your ears into consciously aware form, but it's coming from the unconscious. It is okay. So I, I guess that really is the key to everything, and uh, um, we better know what we're talking about when we're talking about the unconscious. And obviously, you're the right person for that. Now, yeah, well, let me ask you: Don't you make decisions like that intuitively? Joe says, let's go to lunch, X, Y, Z. Eh, I don't like X, Y, Z. How about we go to ABC? Okay. Intuitively, I like that. I don't like that. That's coming from the unconscious. All intuition comes from the unconscious. It's the unconscious manipulating our body to get a message across because a pathway called the corpus callosum connecting the right and left brain is typically functionally closed. Now, the good thing, if I'm reading your book correctly, a perfect 10 for us is within reach, even if we've tried and failed before. So the mere fact that we might be 35 years old and fa failed a few times at whatever task we really find important or that we're coming to you for some help with, the past failures make no difference. We can still overcome that if we follow your advice. Actually, the past failures have a learning value, but Yes, indeed, you can overcome it because people fail because of self-defeating unconscious habit patterns. Let me give you an example. You ever come home from work really tired? Sure. Somebody says to you, hey, there's this great movie on you said you want to see. Let's go see it. And suddenly you're filled with energy. You hop in the car and you go. That's a switch, unconsciously switched from a self-defeating unconscious habit pattern of being tired to, oh, yeah, let's go. That's a great movie. Makes sense? No, absolutely does. I guess we have to find those things that's going to, let's use the expression, turn us on or get us motivated to do the task because up till the friend saying, do you want to go to the movie? I would have said, oh, I'm tired. I'm just going to go home tonight. I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, well, it's even easier. I have techniques in the book for changing the self-defeating unconscious habit patterns like being tired into self-supporting ones like being filled with energy. <laughs> now, Dr. Lickman, can you tell us your method is something called cybernetic transposition? Am I correct? Did I get that term Absolutely. correct? 
And in the book, you use the simple initial CT, which is a little easier for most of us to say. So the big term is cybernetic transposition, but sometime I guess we'll refer to it in this show as simply CT. Can you give us some examples in life where this would take place and uh, maybe something you've worked with a client with or your own life? Well, let's take an unusual one. About six years ago, I was having trouble climbing the stairs and it felt the way it had felt when I had a ventricular fibrillation heart attack. So I said, I better get myself to a cardiologist. Well, my cardiologist had retired, so I found a new one, went in there. First thing he did was an echocardiogram, where they look at your heart and the flow of blood. Unfortunately, the technician said to me, I can't see what's going on. There's too much fluid in the way I can't see your heart. Pretty soon we found I was in the hospital having a biopsy and a very friendly doctor walked in and said, I'm your oncologist if you want, you've got stage four lung cancer. So that went on for 14 months with chemo and all the other stuff. And a tumor that was about 40% of my left lung rising up to 50%. So the Traditional medical wasn't working. I gave it a chance. I said, okay, I'm going to use my techniques. And in one month, no tumor, no cancer, no more. Really? That that, that must have been written up in the medical books or someplace because obviously that doesn't just happen by luck of the draw. Yeah, my oncologist said he'd never seen a spontaneous remission in this kind of cancer. So what can I say? It works. It, it, it definitely does. Now, when, when people come to see you, what is, I'm going to say, maybe the most prevalent um, either problem or situation that they're looking for particular help with to begin things? Is it job-related, personal relationships, uh, matrimonial? I'd say there are four. One is making money. Two is getting a perfect relationship or manic relationship. Third is getting a perfect job. And fourth is losing weight. <laughs> and does it work on all those fields? Will the methods uh, work for people? About 100% in my online training where I can get good statistics. Over the past 10 years, 100% success rate. That's fantastic. That really is. And then obviously for all of us, if if this even worked uh, 80%, we would be amazed. But if, we, if you can tell us and you're telling us that the people who work with it are getting 100% results, you had a terrific health result that obviously makes it possible for you to be here today because that, that was kind of a severe incident that you just explained. Um, we want to know more about it. There's a subheading in your book that says, your conscious mind will always fail you. What does that mean? You know, like the books... Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill's famous book. It's it's conscious. Consciously do this, consciously do that. I have yet to find anybody who's made that work uh, because they're consciously striving to do it. And yet, there's a great deal of medical research that says all the decisions are unconsciously. For example, say you suddenly decide you want to stand up. About five to 10 seconds before that, your unconscious is already tensing the muscles to stand up, puts the idea into your conscious mind, want to stand up, and you stand up. But the unconscious was at work five to second, 10 seconds before you consciously were at work. And that's the way it works. Now, when the unconscious runs the show and gets things going, is there any way, I mean, I'm guessing through your methods, you can kind of prime it or get it set up. We were, I guess through school, we're always told willpower, um, start working on something, set a goal at the end of it, focus. Uh, these are words that we hear time after time again. But uh, I'm the way I'm hearing it from you, it's to get that unconscious mind working in the right direction. Absolutely. I saw some research done by one of the large British universities, only 4% of New Year's resolutions are achieved. That's conscious. (laughs) 
Wow, four four percent. That that's. Uh, I I would think we should be easily beatable with that, even if uh, we don't make the hundred percent mark. Uh, Stu, before we go further, I'd like our audience to know that if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Dr. Stuart Lickman. He's the author of a a book, Make Your Life a 10, and I think we all want that. Uh, Stu, can you tell us, uh, is there a website where we can learn more? Yeah, it's basically my name, StuartLickman.com. Easy enough to remember, and we'll give that information later in the show. And Lichtman is spelled L-I-C-H-T-M-A-N. You talk about harmony existing between the conscious and the unconscious mind. Is this kind of, I want to say, having our life in alignment, that seems to be a popular word today, Uh, get our life in alignment, uh, our beliefs, our cultural beliefs, our religious beliefs, our work beliefs, Is that the same thing, or when you say get a harmony between the conscious and unconscious, is that something different? It's a little simpler than that. You know, when you think of doing something, and you consciously say to yourself, that's for me, and you intuitively feel, yeah, that's for me, I really want to go for it, that means your conscious and unconscious are in alignment with it. When you think of something, say, yeah, let's go for it, and you intuitively or unconsciously find excuses for not doing it, you've got a conflict going. That definitely sounds like me, and I'm sure just in saying that, when a lot of us pull back and don't do the things that we should be doing, I, I think right away we recognize that you're talking to us, and these are things that can make a difference in our lives. Now, a big word that I kept seeing in your book is blockers. What does that mean in terms of our success and making our life a 10? What is a blocker? A blocker is a self-defeating unconscious habit pattern. Let me give you an example. Think of an infant, newborn infant. They have a survival situation. Either they get fed or they'll die. So, They dig into the collective unconscious. Have you ever noticed all babies do this? They scream. (laughs) They turn red in the face. They move their little arms and legs around. And pretty soon, if they've got a decent parent, they come running. And it's a very successful way of getting fed. But now let's say the little baby named Mary. Mary is now 42 years old. She's working in a job and she just made a terrific foul up. She's on the carpet in her boss's office. And the question is, are they going to fire Mary? So her unconscious views that as a survival situation. What if I don't have a job? How am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to get money? So on. So it invokes a survival response that worked before. Suddenly, Mary starts, voice gets louder. She may get red in the face. She's pounding the table. And guess what? Exactly the same unconscious pattern as she expressed as an infant to keep her alive. Except now, since I've run close to 100 companies, I can tell you it's the best way to get fired, (laughs) which is what happens in that example. Exactly. I mean, that certainly that's the way I would think of it. If Mary started acting like the child did, uh, it's kind of an immature reaction and an overreaction. And I guess as a, if I were in her boss's position or upper management, I would say, do we really want to rely on this person? She's made some mistake that brought her here to begin with. And now her reaction to the mistake isn't what most of us would call professional. Um, is is that a very typical one? Do you see that one a lot? Sure. Most of the blockers are from earlier in our life. Think about this. Almost everything we do, I would say everything is done unconsciously. Think about reading. Now, my wife has a preschool, probably the best one in the world, and I watch these kids learning to read. The process takes about three to four years, you know. You first have to learn language, that some sounds are associated with objects, people, 
actions and so forth. Then you have to learn that some of those sounds are associated with letters. And then you have to learn that letters put together into combination are words. And then you have to learn how those words are put together into sentences and so forth. Now, for the kid, they look at a book the first time, it's impossible. Think of yourself. You don't uh, happen to read Russian, do you? No, I don't. Okay. So imagine you have a book in the Cyrillic alphabet written in Russian. You look at that and you're in a position that a little kid is in. And it seems to be impossible. And it takes five or six years for an adult to learn to read Russian. So the kid, you and I, have these unconscious habit patterns that we formed over four or five years. Now we look at a book in English and we know exactly what it says. No thinking about it, just no. That's unconscious habit patterns. Let's say, I mean, something that isn't as extreme as I don't read or understand Russian, but let's say certain things that I might do in a difficult situation, whether it's blink my voice gets a little louder. As you exp- explained, if, if, if I was going into the boss's office fearful that I made a mistake and that might lead to my termination, um, maybe I talk faster because I'm making excuses, etc. And to the boss, this is very obvious. It's in effect telling him, yeah, I know I goofed up. I know I made a mistake. And now I'm trying to talk around it. What are some of the ways we can identify some of these blockers? Basically, anytime you're experiencing other than loving, joy, enthusiasm, happiness, you got a block of running. So any type of unhappiness? Yeah. Now, who identifies, though? I mean, obviously, some people, they can be 28 years old, 45, 75. Uh, who would identify for them? Do they need someone like yourself competent in this field? Is it a psychiatrist, psychologist? Pretty easy to identify what you're experiencing at any time if you stop for a second and but it's easy for you because you're the expert on it but if these people could identify it would they keep honestly keep doing it from let's say age teenage to age 39 because there are some people who have a pattern they've lost three four five yeah. jobs you see it's unconscious they're not aware of what's going on unconscious means not conscious you're not consciously aware. It's working automatically. Uh, let's take another example. Maybe you have a friend who keeps getting into the wrong romantic relationship. I mean, you can see they introduce you to a new friend they have, and they say, this is the one. And you say, oh, no, not again. You can see it, but they can't. And that's the way it is with unconscious habit patterns. You can get a conscious awareness, things aren't right. Your unconscious gives you signals modifying the body, which it controls completely. And we call those intuitive intuitive signals. And those tell you that something's wrong, a blocker is running, if we pay attention. Unfortunately, humans don't come with an operating manual. No, I think that's a great example and one that a lot of us see. I want to talk to you more about that. But once again, I want our audience to know if you're just tuning in, you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is (coughs) Stuart Lichtman. That's spelled L-I-C-H-T-M-A-N. His book is Make Your Life a 10. And Stuart, could could you give us the website where we can learn more information? StuartLichtman.com. Now, Stuart, you just used, I think, a very good and a typical one that a lot of us see. Uh, The person who kind of keeps going back and picking the wrong date, the wrong mate, the wrong partner, whatever you want to call it in life. And, of course, they go through either two or three breakups, separations, divorces, or whatever. Will they listen or do they have to find this? In other words, do they have to be enlightened somehow, namely through you or hearing a show like this? Or if their mother or girlfriend or boyfriend on the sides simply says, hey, look, you know, 
three times you pick this type of person. It's not working out for you with them. Uh, to use an example we hear on TV a lot, the bad boy or bad girl image. Um, maybe you should look for someone different. You're not connecting with that person. Will they listen if someone tells them this? Well, if someone tells them that, they say, well, maybe that's right, but I don't. I mean, when I pick this person, it seems right. Unless, of course, they happen to buy a copy of my book and read it. Now, I have a what I call perfect partner process. It's pretty simple. Think about this for a minute. You list the characteristics that you have encountered in anybody in your whole life that you intuitively would like to have in your perfect partner. And then through a translation ability, you tell your unconscious, go fetch. And typically in two to four weeks, you'll have that perfect partner. Uh, I developed that one. I lived in Sweden for eight years. I had a Swedish wife, and she had a girlfriend, Katrina, who was very bright, who kept doing that. She kept getting into relationships with guys who emotionally abused her because she was brighter than they were. Um, so I ran her through this process. It took about an hour. And three days later, she said, I found him. I said, found who? She said, my perfect partner. I said, oh, that's great. She said, yeah, I've been working with him for six years, and I never thought of him in that context. And suddenly, I realized he's exactly what I want. By the way, they've been married 36 years, <laughs> have kids, happy uh, and built a house together. That is awesome. And, you know, when you say it, and like most things, we find we've been doing this show now for 35 years. Most times it is something very simple like that. And the, I want to say the prize, in this case, it was a perfect mate. But whether it's the job or something, is might be literally closer than we think. But we just haven't taken the time, like you told her to do, to write down what she was really looking for in the husband. And when she finally did that, instead of going in the wrong direction, she went in the right direction. What is the time process usually when someone comes to you? I mean, uh, if they say, look, I, I hear you can make my life a 10. I want you to do this. Is it enough to go through your book? Do they have to read it a few times? What, what do you usually find? Uh, I usually find that if they read through the book and then do the exercises, the first thing they do is to develop a roadmap of what it takes to make their life a 10. If I ask you, for example, to remember what happened today, something would pop into your conscious mind right away, right? Correct, yes. Okay, so you rate 1 to 10. How perfect was that experience for me? 10 is the way I'd always like it to be, and one is the pits. <laughs> so you write that down. If it's less than a 10, you use a marvelous ability we have of hindsight, which is tremendously powerful in the right context, and you simply use hindsight to come up with a version of that situation that you would consider a 10. You write that down, you cross the other out. You go through your life, through this whole year, people typically come up with eight to 14 non-redundant situations. And the ones that are already 10, great. The ones that are less than a 10, I've got techniques in the book to make a replacement for them. That's a 10. And that's the way it worked. I'd say it takes six months to a year to get your life to a perfect 10 using the book, just the book. And that sounds very reasonable because if we went to a gym or if we went to any program to learn uh, some, uh, get some certificate in the medical field or mechanical field, et cetera, to learn some other expertise or field of study, it would take some time. Uh, things just don't happen instantly. And to learn something like this, but of course the rewards are worth it. And if along the way we see a result like that, and that 
obviously makes a lot of sense. Just going back and saying, what did you like about something? What didn't you like? Putting it down, as simple as can be. And we can do this. Can most people do this just with the book alone? Or do they really need some professional one-on-one instruction like a doctor performing surgery? Well, in order to make it easy for people, I include free. They have to send <clears throat> send an email to I think it's uh, Stu's gift to me uh, dot com, and I send them an audiobook version, a series of guided advice on how to do the various processes, and fifteen specific application of the basic techniques, things like finding a perfect partner, finding a perfect job with a perfect boss. Most people forget the with a perfect boss. Um, Losing weight easily, keeping it off. I lost 100 pounds in three months. Six years ago, I felt like I could eat anything I wanted. I've kept it off. I'm a great cook. I pick out on weekends. I go up two or three pounds. By Wednesday, I'm back at my set point, getting your work done in half the time with better results. I try to give them everything they need. Plus, I have a free coaching session once a week for readers of the book. I don't think we can ask for much more than that because you've hit all the major things, the love life, the job, the losing weight or gaining weight. Uh, Stu, once again, I'm going to ask you before we wrap up, give us the website. StuartLickman.com. And Lickman is spelled L-I-C-H-T-M-A-N, and Stuart is S-T-U-A-R-T. Uh, Dr. Lickman, thanks so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. I've enjoyed chatting with you. I'd like our audience to know that you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success. 